In 2012, journalist Steve Call penned Private Empire, ExxonMobil, and American Power, an investigative work that delves into the practices and culture of the multinational oil corporation ExxonMobil. Call argues that ExxonMobil operates as a private empire, wielding significant influence on the global stage in its pursuit of immense profits. The book also examines Exxon's role in projecting American political power internationally over the past two decades. Drawing on Exxon's historical lineage as the successor of John D. Rockefeller's Standard Oil, Call focuses on the company's transformation following the 1989 Exxon Valdez oil spill. He reconstructs the public's outraged response to the spill, highlighting Exxon's perceived negligence and disregard for the environment. Call acknowledges both positive and negative aspects of Exxon's subsequent actions. While the company developed a strong emphasis on safety, he reveals that the true purpose behind these measures was often to extract greater productivity from workers through heightened attention and precision. The new safety culture at Exxon is portrayed as one of increased discipline, enforcement, uniformity, and, paradoxically, workplace insecurity. In addition to the Valdez disaster, Call highlights another significant event in Exxon's recent history, the relocation of its headquarters from New York City to Irving, Texas, in 1993. He suggests that this move led to a profound shift in company culture, characterized by a more rugged Texan worldview. At the center of this new order stands CEO Lee Ironass Raymond, who embodies the transformed ethos of the company. By exploring these pivotal moments and the inner workings of ExxonMobil, Call provides a comprehensive account of the corporation's trajectory and its impact on American power and global energy dynamics. It is important to note that the book's analysis is rooted in the state of affairs up until its publication in 2012 and does not encompass more recent developments in the company or the evolving energy landscape. Raymond, having successfully steered Exxon through the aftermath of the Valdez spill, takes the helm during the company's merger with Mobil. Despite his scientific background, Raymond stubbornly rejects the mounting scientific consensus on climate change. Instead, he directs Exxon's substantial influence towards undermining that consensus. The nickname Iron Ass captures Raymond's unyielding nature. Call recounts an incident involving a text message from Raymond to an injured executive, declaring it as their final injury as an Exxon employee. Call's exploration extends beyond Raymond, tracing Exxon's extensive reach across the globe. From equatorial Africa to the Middle East, Indonesia, and South America, Exxon's tentacles intertwine with politics in Washington, D.C., and Moscow. The company emerges as a behemoth, possessing a size and power comparable to that of a sovereign nation. With revenues rivaling the gross domestic product of many countries, Exxon operates one of the largest lobbying operations in Washington, employing a considerable number of former senators and elected representatives. In numerous territories, ExxonMobil's political involvement surpasses that of national diplomats. Call questions why this dynamic exists, observing that Exxon's investment in the Chad Cameroon oil project surpasses annual aid to Chad from the United States by a significant margin. In addition to its diplomatic presence, Exxon maintains private armies and intelligence operations in various countries, often operating independently from the U.S. government's forces. Call reveals that Exxon's paid security force in Chad exceeds 2,500 personnel, equipped with SUVs, and their intelligence operations there surpass the resources of the CIA in terms of size and funding. The overall portrait, Call Paints, portrays Exxon Mobil as a corporate entity wielding immense power, influence, and resources, extending its reach across geopolitical landscapes and operating with its own infrastructure in many nations. In the crucial oil region of the Niger Delta, Exxon's involvement goes beyond its own operations. The company funds the Nigerian Navy and even deploys its own ships. Call uncovers the extent of Exxon's influence, revealing that the company recruits, pays, supplies, and manages sections of the Nigerian military and police. Some Nigerian policemen even don the company's Red Horse logo on their uniforms. In Indonesia, Exxon provides funding to counterinsurgents, despite their notorious use of torture and murder, leading to the U.S. government cutting funding to the Indonesian government. Call finds ample evidence suggesting that the American government is either unable or unwilling to control the company. He recounts an instance where President George W. Bush, in a conversation with the Indian Prime Minister, 
stated that nobody tells these guys what to do. Call profiles the key figures within Exxon, including the former CEO Rex Tillerson, who later served briefly as Donald Trump's Secretary of State. Notably, upon retiring, the formidable Lee Iron S. Raymond received a retirement package worth $400 million. On the domestic front, Exxon has invested millions of dollars in shaping public opinion and the scientific discourse on climate change, naturally advocating against the idea that burning oil contributes to it. Call uncovers the irony that while Exxon publicly disputed the concept of human-induced climate change, the company privately bet on the melting Arctic caused by climate change, anticipating that it would expose new oil reserves for drilling. Private Empire garnered recognition and was shortlisted for the 2012 Financial Times Goldman Sachs Business Book of the Year Award. The New York Times highlighted the book's ability to fulfill its purpose by revealing the inner workings of one of the Western world's most influential concentrations of unelected power. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.